Well, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second day of Thai Global Summit 2020. Thank you so much for joining us from across the globe. And like we always do since yesterday, another interesting session awaiting you. So I'm not going to talk much, ladies and gentlemen, and trust me, even this one is going to be a totally thrilling experience. So I'm not going to talk much. Without further ado, let me go ahead now invite Ritu Maria, who's going to have a fire chat with Kunal Kapoor. So please join me in welcoming Ritu Maria, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks a lot, Dhwani, uh, for the generous introduction. And it's, of course, wonderful to be here at the Thai Global Summit. And what more, you know, it's always good to talk to Kunal Kapoor. Uh, he's the co-founder of Keto. And, you know, um, so Kunal, I've always seen that most celebrities uh, are doing a lot of work with the startups today, but usually they stick to their own trade and, um, you know, they would sort of bring the star value to it. But, you know, what is really original about Kunal and the work that he's doing at Keto is, which he started eight years back with his friends, um, is that, you know, he's actually rolled his sleeves up and gone all the way up there and built Keto. And he's not just built a startup from ground up, but he's actually built a change in India with this platform. He's organized crowdfunding to a very large level. And also he's lending a lot of transparency to charitable initiatives in India, which is, which is a big deal because India has always been skeptical and Indians have always been um, very uh, skeptical about how they would like to do charity. So I think uh, while Kunal is shining both at acting as well as entrepreneurship, we would love to talk to him a little more about understanding that how he has become a role model in Bollywood uh, and helped everybody to look beyond just acting. So uh, Kunal, you know, we'd love to know how did you get about to building Keto with Varun um, and, you know, helping the products to become bigger, the business to grow large in these eight years. We pretty much see a uh, initiative of Keto being almost on every digital platform. So right. particularly for you as an actor, how was the learning experience about technology and entrepreneurship? Well, first of all, thank you so much. It's always wonderful to chat with you. And thank you so much for having me. Uh, Actually, Keto is an abbreviation for Key to Tomorrow, uh, because we believe that uh, uh, the democratization of capital was something that could be really powerful and was much needed. Uh, because you often came across people that uh, had a great idea but didn't have access to capital. And then you met people that actually had capital but didn't know who to invest that in. And uh, we felt like if we could sort of uh, use technology to build a bridge between people that can help and people that need helping, uh, then that would be uh, something that was very, very powerful. And that's how uh, Keto was born. Uh, it was eight and a half years back that we started me and Varun out of uh, Varun's dad's office, actually, just the two of us in one little cabin. And uh, I think what really sort of drew me to uh, a crowdfunding platform like Keto was that I had worked very closely uh, with a number of NGOs in the social space. And I found that there were a lot of challenges that these NGOs were facing. Uh, first uh, and foremost, the challenge was that uh, how do you reach out to new people and new donors and make them aware of the work that you're doing? Uh, the other is uh, obviously the challenge of raising funds. And I found that uh, a number of these NGOs actually were offline. Very few had online presence. Uh, so none of them were really actually sort of uh, using the power of technology, uh, you know, to create awareness, to raise money. And I happened to meet Varun at the same time who had very similar ideas. And uh, uh, we felt like, you know, we really needed to get these people together in a way that was transparent. Because like you said, uh, transparency is something that is really important when you're building a social impact business. Uh, people want to give, but they're not sure whether the money is going to go to the right place or not. Uh, so our idea was to build a bridge, but, you know, build it in a way which is transparent and easy. And uh, for me, I think the biggest attraction was that I come from a business family. Uh, my father was into construction. I worked with him. I worked in an export firm. I then actually worked in the stock market for a year and a half as a sub broker before I became an actor. Uh, so I was always drawn towards business and entrepreneurship. Uh, but for me, the best kind of business uh, was a business that was not only about profit, but was about social impact. Uh, so when me and Varun got together, we, you know, our mission was then and it still is, is not only about creating a startup, but, you know, changing a mindset. Uh, our mission really is to uh, create an environment where people are far more charitable and, you know, a mindset where people feel like contribution is really important. And uh, that's what we've really focused on in the last eight and a half years. 
Sure, and what a wonderful organization you've created uh, in these last eight and a half years too. So, you know, how did you use the power of social media? I think social media took off in a big way since about 2009 and 2010, which were probably right. still the early days and, you know, also the time when your organization was in the built-up stage. Uh, so, I mean, you know, how, how was it that you realized the power of social media at that time and what it could do for you and Keto at that time to, you know, be able to take the initiative and the social impact, uh, make it bigger? Well, you know, for us, uh, I think the biggest uh, challenge when we were starting off was we were actually creating a market where it didn't exist. Uh, so when we started off, uh, crowdfunding across the world was in a very sort of nascent stage. And I don't think there were, there were any other crowdfunding platforms in India. Uh, so we were actually uh, creating something that didn't exist. And uh, for us, it was not only about uh, educating the people that were going to donate, but also educating the people that were going to raise money, the NGOs in this case, that something like this existed, which they could leverage. Uh, so for us, uh, uh, what became very important was how do we sort of uh, distribute information? Uh, because at that point of time, that was the most important thing for us to do because we were, like I said, uh, creating a new market, educating people, creating awareness. Uh, so I think social media played a really important role in the distribution of information. And I think, uh, I think, I think that's been the primary sort of benefit of social media, which is connection. Uh, sometimes uh, this connection is used for the wrong reasons, which is misinformation, which we find a lot of in the world today. Uh, but I think uh, it's also very, very powerful uh, because, I mean, we live in a world uh, where if I want to contribute to somebody, uh, I reach out to a tech company like Keto. I can start a campaign in Wana. Uh, I can then use social media to reach out to people from across the world saying, look, I'm in an emergency need and I need your help. And they can help me with a payment gateway in a few minutes. Uh, so, you know, uh, I think uh, technology and social media, of course, uh, has changed the world that we live in. And I think its greatest power is, is the connection that is created. Surely. And, you know, where in these last eight years have you seen the maximum impact happening for Keto? I mean, was it to really sort of in healthcare you saw it or what, what, so what particular, I'm sure when you started, you, you probably broad based crowdfunding. So how did right. you then narrow it down and brought it down to where the maximum impact was felt? And what are those areas where you, um, this impact I was? Th I think, you know, with any tech company, which is actually similar to being an actor, is that you really have to listen to the audience. I think the audience sort of directs you, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you make a movie, uh, which you think is a great film and then it releases on Friday and by Friday evening, everyone's like, what a rubbish film. Uh, so you can either resist that and say that, no, I made a great film and fight the audience. Or you can say, you know, the audience is right. Uh, this is what they want to see. Uh, so I think the audience sort of uh, directed us. Uh, we didn't direct ourselves. Uh, I think uh, now uh, most of the campaigns on Keto are medical fundraisers. And I think uh, the reason for that is too, I think we live in a country where uh, the whole health and medical space is so underserved. I mean, millions of people are pushed into poverty only because they can't pay their medical. And uh, uh, secondly, is that uh, usually what happens with a medical, uh, you know, you need an operation or a surgery that needs to be done in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you need uh, cancer treatment. If you don't get that, it's a matter of life and death. Uh, so it's always an urgent need. Uh, so I think... Uh, most people that start campaigns are people that have a medical need and a lot of people that actually, actually contribute uh, to campaigns, uh, people that campaign to med, uh, contribute to medical campaigns, because like I said, it's an urgent need. It's a matter of life and death. You know, uh, if you start a startup six months later, it may, it's fine. You make a movie a year later, it's fine. Uh, but if somebody doesn't get money at the right time, uh, they may not survive. Uh, so I think it's the audience that really sort of directed us into the medical space. And uh, now I think most of our campaigns are actually uh, uh, campaigns related to the medical and health space. Sure. And how do you think the cultural fabric of India has got changed in these last eight years towards making donations, towards being charitable, uh, particularly with your platform? How, how do you feel the consumer behavior when you started it in the, maybe the first couple of years and now eight years down the line looks much different? 
I think what happened uh, with us, uh, which was uh, pretty organic, because you know we didn't set out to advertise for the first couple of years at all, was that uh, you know there is a perception that there's a certain amount of shame that's attached to asking online, uh, because you're actually putting yourself out there and saying, "Look, I need money. Can you help me?" Uh, but what happened is that when you see somebody who's very similar to you uh, reaching out to people. Uh, in a need, in need, and in, in an emergency, and saying that look, I need money, uh, and people actually coming forward and contributing. Then, when you find yourself in a similar situation, uh, you feel like if he can do it or she can do it, then why can't I? The other thing that happened with us is that a lot of people that actually contributed to a fundraiser uh, went on and started a fundraiser when they were in need. Uh, so we saw a lot of cases of people actually coming forward and donating to someone's uh, campaign. And then a couple of months, a couple of years later, when they had a need, uh, you know, uh, starting a fundraiser for a friend of theirs or for themselves or for their family, uh, because you know they felt like if they had given and there was no shame attached to that, then why should there be shame attached to uh, asking people for money? Uh, so we've seen that uh, that change a lot, and I think that also has to do a lot with uh, uh, what I said in the beginning is that education and awareness. Uh, the more people get educated about the power of fundraising. The more there's awareness, the less there will be any sort of shame attached to it. And uh, I think in the last three years, we've really sort of seen it take off. Uh, uh, say about three, three and a half years back, uh, when we really started doing well, uh, we were raising in a month how much we were raising in a year. Then it went to uh, raising in a week how much we were raising in a year. And now we're pretty much raising in a day how much we were raising in a year four or five years back. Uh, so that's how much it's grown. And I think it has to do with the fact that uh, people are not afraid to uh, step up and ask a stranger for money when they're in need. Sure, and particularly, how has COVID been for you? I mean, do you do you feel because of obviously since you do so much work in the healthcare uh, field, so do you think that uh, the COVID and for most startups, it's it's not been a, one of the best time for most SME businesses. It's been a terrible time. But right. how was it for Keto? I mean, you know, were you able to sort of uh, did your business grow or did did you feel that there were some things that went down? Well, it's growing. I mean, in fact, uh, we've been hiring. We've hired a lot of people in the last couple of months. Uh, I think, you know, uh, the thing that I saw, which, which, is, which is wonderful, uh, I've always seen a lot of goodness on Keto. I mean, we keep talking about how the world is a bad place and you go onto social media or you turn on the news and there's only bad news. Uh, but when you're on a platform like Keto, you only you get a lot of good news, which is that people from across the world coming together to help somebody that they don't know. And uh, I think uh, that just sort of reinstates your faith in the goodness of people. But uh, especially during COVID, I've seen people really wanting to step up and contribute and make a difference. And I hope that this is something that doesn't change. I hope when we're done with the pandemic as well and we are back to our normal lives, uh, you know, this feeling of contribution still stays with people. Uh, I mean, uh, I've had friends of mine who've never contributed to anything uh, coming forward and starting fundraisers in Keto. Uh, I had a friend of mine whose daughter is just 10 years old and uh, she was watching the news uh, with her father and she saw the migrant worker crisis and she told her dad that, look, I don't want to just sit and watch news. I want to do something. I want to make a difference. Yeah. So he called me up and he said, look, my daughter wants to do something. Uh, can she start a campaign on Keto? And she started a campaign and raised uh, 14 lakh rupees for the migrant oh, wow. world. And she's That's just 10 years old. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I just feel like uh, this desire to contribute is great. And that, you know, I think each and every one of us feels it right now. And I think uh, for us as a platform, our responsibility is to just make sure that we provide the best possible avenue for people to contribute. I mean, I was sure. thinking that uh, if this happened 10 years back and this girl wanted to make a contribution, uh, she would have not had the means. Uh, so what we've done is just provide an avenue uh, to contribute. And we have to make sure that we provide the best possible avenue. Absolutely. So, you know, now now that you've sort of, uh, with along with acting, you've now almost an established entrepreneur. Eight years does that to you. And then, of course, you come from a business family. So what what is it that particularly these last few years have taught you? I mean, you know, as an entrepreneur, how do you think you have evolved during this time? And, you know, what, what, what challenges were there that you faced about your own fundraising for the startup? And 
um, or just sort of dealing with people and then trying to balance, you know, your celebrity status along with your entrepreneurship zeal. So, I think uh, the first thing that you realize very soon is that like the movies, uh, entrepreneurship is not as glamorous as it looks. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of hard work and lots of sweat and blood and pain. Uh, the other things, I mean, you always say that entrepreneurship is actually very similar to the movies, even though people think that they are completely far apart. Uh, in both of them, you need to be incredibly creative. Uh, in the movies, of course, you have to be creative. Uh, but even in entrepreneurship, to disrupt something that has existed for years, you have to be very creative. Uh, secondly, is like I was saying, you have to listen to your audience. Mm -hmm. uh, as an actor and as an entrepreneur, you have to let the audience tell you what is going right and what is going wrong. Uh, the third thing is failure. I think you have to be willing to face failure. Uh, as a movie actor, you work for a year and uh, on Friday, everyone says this is a shit movie. So, you know, it fails. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, similarly, as an entrepreneur, you know, you have to keep going, but you have to face failure. There will be rejection. People will say this is a horrible idea. You're not executing it well, but you have to learn to take that feedback and overcome the failure. And thirdly, uh, fourthly, self-belief. Uh, I think when we were going to investors to raise money, I think it made it easier that I was an actor. So we had uh, far more access to people. Uh, you know, if I called someone and said, I want to meet you, it's, it's easier to get a meeting than it is for somebody that's, that's not, that is an outsider, right? Uh, but uh, uh, what was important was that, you know, we went for this one meeting and this one investor told us that this is a rubbish idea. Uh, Indians are not charitable and nobody gives in India. And he was... Crowdfunding, what is crowdfunding? You know, it's not going to work. Who have you seen Indians give? You know, and we, we obviously disagreed with him. And uh, when we were leaving, he told me something very interesting. He said that, uh, look, I've said what I had to say. Uh, but it's not important that I believe in your idea as much as it's important that you believe in your idea. Uh, because if you've believed in your idea, then, you know, 10 years back, I'll look back and I'll say I should have believed in the idea when they first came to me. Uh, yeah. So I think self-belief is very important and it's very important in the movies as well. I mean, uh, as an actor, uh, you're alone in front of the camera. Uh, you can make a complete fool of yourself. Uh, you have to get into that scene and do whatever you're doing with complete self-belief and conviction. So I think these are things that are really important uh, uh, in both uh, being an entrepreneur and being an actor. Absolutely. And I can tell that the entrepreneurship bug has completely bitten you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what further? Do you see yourself as a, doing a, some other startups or do you see yourself going more the investor way where you might actually want to put some investments in other startups or start a fund maybe at some point of time? So, and, you know, what, what particular sectors would interest you if so? Well, I, I have already invested in a, a bunch of startups, uh, but yeah, going forward, I would love to start a fund and uh, it would be a social impact fund for sure, uh, because I think there's a lot of areas that uh, I would like to make a difference in, uh, right from education to rural development. Now, but uh, those are, you know, I can't start a company for everything that I want to do. Uh, so I'd uh, rather invest in people uh, that have great ideas and are already doing some great work. And uh, I think another reason that I really want to do that is that, you know, I was the outsider in the movies and as an entrepreneur. Uh, I didn't have access to people. I didn't have access to capital. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of people out there that are outsiders uh, with great ideas, but no access. And now that I find myself in some place of privilege, uh, I'd like to help them. Uh, you know, now that I'm slightly higher up on the ladder, I'd like, them, like to help them climb up the ladder as well. Uh, so I think uh, that for me is something that is really, really important is uh, social impact and obviously uh, helping the outsider, the little guy who I've been as well, uh, you know, try and get to a place where he or she deserves to be. Sure. And I think that's a big thought because, you know, a lot of startups would tend to gain benefit from it. You know, ever since we started talking, I've been very fascinated with this monkey that is, I think, lying on the <laughs> piano back there. Does it, be, does it sort of stand for something particular? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually obsessed with space. And so uh, wherever I go in the world, I collect something related to like astronauts or space. So, uh, so this is one of those <laughs> it finds itself right behind us. Although he's actually pretty cute. <laughs> <if you're possibly. laughs> 
that's you know i know we're finally at the end of our time so you know you want to sort of give any sort of very bollywood style message to all the entrepreneurs out there with some you know big dialogue and sweeping statement coming from the industry uh what sweeping state i mean uh uh i think like you know like i said is that uh, if you are if you are somebody that's looking to be an entrepreneur uh you have to be uh willing to be very very resilient uh i think will power is a really really important one because there will be obstacles and there will be challenges and sometimes you'll feel like why am i doing this i mean there were times when me and varun looked at each other and we we said we should have just started an e-commerce company much easier <laughs> you know uh so there will be times when you'll be like my god what have i got myself into uh but uh you've really got to like put yourself belief in and you've got to uh power through uh you've got to be creative at that point of time uh but don't give up i think that's that's really important i i think it's very important that you uh believe in what you're doing uh, if you don't have belief i think you shouldn't get into it don't get into it for the wrong reasons i uh, don't get into it to build a company that will suddenly make 10x or 20x i think uh get into it with the right intent uh because i think if uh, the intent is right the money will follow uh so uh uh yeah power through uh you know be ready for failure and make sure that your mission and your intent is correct yeah absolutely and i'm into that and i've been you know we continue to hope with your advice entrepreneurs continue to do big things just like you are doing at keto thank you very much uh, for talking to me kanan over thank to you dwani thank you Well, thank you so much that was wonderful and a gripping session i must say well, thank you kunal for sharing your story and very inspiring and so many takeaways and thank you ritu for curating the session so beautifully ladies and gentlemen like i did mention another beautiful session here and thank you once again